Hello. Our guest today is one of the four women who participated in the Doha negotiations with the Taliban in Doha at the end of 2020. Dr. Habiba Sarabi, hello. Hello, my dear. You were also the first woman in the history of Afghanistan to govern a province, the province of Bamiyan, which we know here in the West because of the d Taliban destruction of the famous Buddha statues. You were speaking to us from Ismia in Turkey because you left Afghanistan after the Taliban took power. Is it because you do not feel safe there? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Afghanistan, of course, is not safe for, for especially for women and all the politicians. When the uh, regime and the government co collapsed, I was in uh, Doha in Qatar uh, because uh, we uh, we were uh, at the negotiation uh, uh, process. So, uh, but I couldn't go back to uh, Kabul, and so that's why my son is is living in Turkey and is with, and uh, so that's why I joined my son uh, and staying now here in Turkey. What are your projects for the future? How do you hope to contribute to the future of uh, politics in Afghanistan? Today, I am very happy that there are uh, there are so many women. There are uh, a number of women. They are uh, now taking the leadership, and they are the leader of their uh, community. They are the leader of women that they stayed inside Afghanistan, and I am proud of them. They are so brave. They are so courageous that is uh, uh, standing against Taliban and looking to them face to face and uh, watching to their eyes and saying uh, uh, their demand and their uh, uh, wish. So here and out of the country, so if we can do some communicate with women, they are inside the country or also to make a kind of network with women that they are out of the country, we have to join together uh, to pressurize, to, uh, uh, to push Taliban for reform. Is it possible, Habiba Sahabi, to negotiate with the new Taliban government? So the, the uh, negotiation is stopped. It's ended without any result. Unfortunately, the Taliban uh, uh, took the power by force, by all the military force. Uh, but uh, on that time, when the Kabul uh, regime collapsed and the uh, president left the country, unfortunately, uh, uh, negotiation is stopped. But uh, there should be some way that we have to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to uh, to put leverage to uh, um, uh, Taliban uh, to respect the human rights, women's rights, and the basic rights of, of the people of Afghanistan. When the American Secretary of State said that the Taliban government had to earn its legitimacy, what does that mean to you? Of course, uh, one of the legitimacy that uh, the half of po population cannot, uh, if they cannot participate in every decision or the political uh, to not be a part of political decision or uh, they don't have the chance to for the uh, social involvement and, and public gathering or education uh, the, how they uh, the Taliban can can get uh, legitimacy so this is a strange and and I was surprised uh, the other day Taliban was uh, uh, announcing some rule for the demonstration and protest so the rule, that it can be applied during a democratic uh, a government. When uh, the, the government can be on the base of democracy, that rule can be applied. But that part of the rule they wanted to take as a uh, uh, advantage, but the rest of the, the rule and, and regulation that all the treaties uh, uh, that can be, uh, it's, uh, the, all the international community have to apply the treaties, the UN treaties, but they are not accepting that. So this is very important that uh, if they want the legitimacy, they have to uh, apply and respect the, the rule and regulation and also human rights, women's rights, and the uh, international uh, UN, uh, um, UN treaties and, and uh, all the convention. What are you hoping from, from the international community? Do you still hope, as you said earlier, that leverage can be applied to the Taliban? Uh, I think uh, yes, because in, this is uh, it was a big mistake by the uh, U.S. and also the NATO country that the uh, uh, the withdrawal of all the troops were not in uh, resp uh, responsible withdrawal and also uh, uh, it was uh, not on a on, on a good time. Of course, 
we don't want the inter the uh, we didn't want the U.S. and NATO could stay forever in Afghanistan. But at least if uh, the political settlement could be happen, and after that the withdrawal could be announced, the, the situation could be much more better than to, than today. So uh, the international community should should correct their mistake, the mistake that they have done it and brought a lot of problem and crisis in Afghanistan. They have to correct, correct it and uh, and use the leverage for this, uh, this the, count, the regional country and also the our neighboring country that uh, the Taliban should uh, uh, should take in a serious way and and uh, uh, make some change on the uh, on their behavior and also to their attitude and and the regulation that very very restrict regulation that they want to apply for the people of Afghanistan. Vous avez conduit dans votre in your province of Bamiyan, when you were the governor, you led reforms concerning education and the role of women in society. Certainly, for the past month, you have become more concerned regarding the role of women in society under the Taliban. Women in Afghanistan, of course, uh, they are not the same that we uh, we thought that, uh, for example, in the 90s. Women in Afghanistan now, they, are, uh, uh, they have got more awareness, they are educated, they, they gain during these uh, um, uh, 20 years. So uh, now they, are, they, they themselves, they are the leader of, of the community. Uh, uh, so they, they, I'm sure that they will bring some change and they will not uh, stop their motivation, they will not stop their uh, activity. They will not stop uh, the reaction that they are making for Taliban to change their mindset. The large majority of Taliban are Pashtun, Sunni, but Bamiyan, the province that you governed, is the home of the Hazaras, a Shia minority. Are you worried that this minority and others would be persecuted by Taliban? Unfortunately, Taliban uh, don't believe to inclusivity, especially for this uh, Hazara minority and also the, uh, the school of thought, uh, the Jafari, which is the Shia population, uh, uh, they don't uh, believe to uh, for them to be a part of the, uh, the I mean, the decision making on the part of the leadership of, uh, and a part of the government. Uh, so this is something also uh, make the, their major, uh, uh, excuse me, make their legitimacy under a, a big question mark. If uh, the government cannot be inclusive, inclusive of all the all type of minority and women, of course, the, their uh, legitimacy, uh, legitimacy is not uh, correct. They have to get uh, legitimacy and one of them can be uh, inclusivity. The Taliban talked about the fight against corruption, and of course there was part of the Afghan population that was ready to be done with American presence. Do you think that played a role in the ease with which the Taliban took over the country? Uh, unfortunately, corruption was one of the biggest problems inside the government of Afghanistan. Uh, however, I was a part of the government. It doesn't mean that everybody, at the, uh, the former government, uh, government uh, was corrupt, uh, but there were so many people that they were corrupt. Uh, co uh, it was not only uh, corruption about the financial uh, cor corruption, but uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, from the uh, uh, different uh, ethnic group didn't have a big chance to the government. It was also a big corruption. And people, that's why people didn't trust uh, uh, to the uh, trust building was something that uh, can make uh, is something. I mean, trust building is something that make the government more powerful and, and give them the legitimacy. Uh, so if this, uh, 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 the trust uh, can be, I mean, uh, there will be a gap between the people and the government. Of course, uh, the government will lose the trust of people, and it is one of the reasons uh, from the uh, people side that they didn't uh, uh, fight, uh, I mean, strongly against the Taliban, and uh, district by district and uh, province by uh, province fall down to the Taliban, the hand of Taliban. Uh, so the, it, it is one of the big reasons of uh, uh, corruption. Uh, financial corruption and nepotism is one of the uh, the issue, and of course uh, the um, uh, irresponsible 
uh, withdrawal from the U.S. is another uh, reason for the collapse of, of the uh, former regime. And in this regard, could you tell us quickly, do you think that Afghanistan was abandoned? Uh, at, at the moment, uh, all the international community are looking to the uh, current government, which is running by Taliban, that if they uh, bring some change to uh, uh, to the um, uh, to the uh, scale of of the governor uh, governing uh, governing, uh, so if they are not respecting all the value, uh, of course, I'm sure that they they will not respect the whole uh, universal value, but at least some of them. If they are not uh, respecting, uh, the international community will take decision. I'm sure that uh, they have to. They have to uh, wait for the Taliban behavior, for uh, the Talib Taliban government, if they respect the international value or not. And after that, they can take a decision about that. Thank you very much, Dr. Habiba Saroubi, for coming to France 24, and thank you for watching our program.